So, couple of charts that I look, I have two screens. He has one of the screen. First screen is all the weekly charts, see? Russell Futures Weekly, right? Uh, you have the 10 year, the ZN Weekly. You have the Bitcoin Weekly and you have the US dollar weekly. What I want to gauge very quickly is, am I at the bottom of moves or am I at the top of moves? I'm at the bottom, I have a 66% chance plus of probability of a rebound, let's say for the bonds, look at the bonds here. They reach to the tick, right? Last week and this week twice, the bottom of the calculator probability rule of third, which I give you for free for the weekly, the daily. Uh, if you want them for the five minutes, uh, 15 minutes, anything below a daily will come up with a premium soon, but the premium is not out yet. So I put the two probability calculator, plus I put the probability power trend. See, I want to stay within the trend, like for instance here on Bitcoin, even this is the top of a move here, where I have a 69% chance of a move of a uh, reject. If it holds here the middle part of the double top here, which is roughly 29,000, if we are able to regain this 29,000 on Bitcoin, then we'll fly, we'll end up being in a range between 29 and 40, right? So the reason I am not getting out of my cryptos here is because look, I still have the short-term calculator up. I still have the long-term trend up. So to me, anything coming down here on Bitcoin between 25 and this 22, right? Is a is probably a gift re-entry within this huge inverted and shoulder. See, you have this shoulder, shoulder, you have this head. So you, we have to assume that this. 20, 25 there is a nice area of re-entry and you have those lower highs. So essentially we have like a little bit of a, a triangle here, you know, on Bitcoin that is super, super, super tight, you see? It's tightening and tightening. So there, what, what, what we don't want now is to break that 23.8, because if we break that 23.8, we come back towards the shoulder which is that 19,000. So, so far it's okay, you know, probability trend still okay, but ideally we want the crypto to push through that trend line, stay above the 29K and sustain them. Now the bonds. Bonds have been very accurate with our probability calculators here. We know that between here and here, this is really the end where they're going to do everything to hold. Actually, excuse me, this is the uh, DXY, this is the US dollar, so it went down, you know, and we knew between 98 and 100 here, 99.50, that the bottom was in place for DXY, and boom, look at hell, and now we're coming to resistance, right? So, the next move that I have for DXY is 109.90, Right there, see you have the edge of both calculator. This 109.90 is going to be the next one because look, we've already broke the middle part of the double bottom. So usually even though there's an institutional resistance at 107, if we have one more big swing down on the bonds here going down here, and making a double bottom, then we might have the XY moving all the way close to the 110. So on, on, on the XY with the tools and everything that we do, everyone, I would have the big picture of the XY at 107, 110 resistance, which ultimately is going to uh, uh, push those bonds, maybe finalize the bonds one more time between now and the next four months, right? To a low, which will be a huge buy opportunity to the market before the elections. So you have to understand the market is a discounting machine. If we are in a recession, uh, 
we are getting out of one. Oh, we have a soft landing, a hard landing, it doesn't matter. What matters is that the market is a discounting machine. And when we are going to reach this new low on the bond between now and the next four months, then that'll be probably the low in the market. And I'm thinking the low in the market is probably seven months before the election. So count backward November, October, you know, it's all about cycles, September, right? And then you go August, July, June, May. So how many months is that? This is one, two, three, four, five, six. So between April and May, right? I expect between now and April that we find some resolution into all the issues that we have in the market to digest, you know? And it might be a temporary resolution for the next three, four years with a new president. And I would be extremely careful. You know, remember 1929? We finally pay all the excess. Well, here are the same, 2027, 2029. We'll have to be very, very careful if we have a cycle ribbon. But when you look at the bonds here, and you look at the bonds here at 105.25, we could push, reject here coming into tomorrow or Friday, depending on the unemployment report. Reject the bond, goes down, which would push the market. So bond down, market down. We go for new low or double bottoms. And this, this is the time where the market is going to be very, very critical. So let me show you a couple of key charts that we can look one by one on my other screen. So we can look at, this is my day trading screen, but I am not going to go to that. I'm going to go to this, this one. So yesterday, usually I don't put that, but yesterday I put two uh, uh, blue line, the 200 moving average and the 200 SMX. So a lot of people look at it on the daily, right? And I want to look at the SPX. And I want to show you really the big picture of it. Okay. So here's the big, big pictures of the market. Okay. And this is going to be very, very interesting and very, very powerful. We started in 2021, shoulder, double top head, shoulder, lower high trend line. Then we started with a inverse head and shoulder, head, inverse head and shoulder, right? Higher low. So now we have a giant cross, recross, retest lower high in the entire market, right? And last week, if you notice, we held perfectly, right? If you put the two calculator, the long term and the probability calculators. We knew that it's going to open either at the edge here at 41.92, at the 200 moving average 4200, or here the bottom of the calculator, probability rule of third that I've been uh, generously giving you guys uh, for free, right? That you can like use, and it's very powerful. Like, as you can see, it was the absolute bottom last week, right? So, and by the way, it's it's available on TradingView right now, and we are developing in other platforms as well. Now, it looks like we have a double bottom that could come, right? So long we pass here, which is 43.40. See, if we pass 43.40 here on, which is also the institutional red, dash resistance zone on SPX, then we would fly and we would fly all the way to the uh, trend line of 44.50, right? But I suspect it's not completely over, right? But this 44.50, 43.40 is where I would call that the sell box. So I have a sell box here, 
And look where I have my buy box. My buy box is somewhere here to here, to the trend line from that inverted and shoulder. So that would mean that we have a buy box somewhere at 4,050, then 4,175, and then the edge or the 200 there, the 4,200. Right, and we came very close last week. We were at forty-two sixty, right? And this is, in my opinion, the the box, the big ping pong range that you are going to see between now and April. This is going to be this forty-four fifty, and if we break it, well, that's it. No more, no more bear, no more forty-three forty, forty-four fifty. Sell box to the buy box, 4,050 to the 4,200, 4,175. So what to do, right? Well, each time we approach the edges here, right, of this buy box here, and the edges of the calculators, of the double calculator premiums, right? Mm -hmm. And so long this is giving me a sideway to a down net buyer or net sellers. See, I have institutional net sellers on the short term. I have major retail, minor retail sellers on the long term. They are just buying at the bottom, see here, the institutions. So I want to mimic a little bit the institution, continuing to dollar cost average between this 4175, 4200 there to the 4,075, all the stocks that I like. So you need to have a watch list and keep on adding to the stocks that you like. Like for instance, I picked up some uh, uh, Palantir Combez at 69 the other day. Uh, I picked up some uh, Shopify. I mean, I picked up quite a bit of stuff the other day, right? And and this is not even this account, by the way. Here you see one Coinbase at 71, it's 73, 40. It's not even that. It's other accounts that I have. This is an account that I trade with. This is not even an account that I really do position. I hold this position just FYI for me, right, to uh, show you a few stuff. But this is not my swing trading account, nor is it my long-term investing account. So... This is the plan, right? We continue shorting towards 4340, which is right there, the red dash and the middle part of the double top. This is very powerful 4340 that could gap up before the unemployment repo. And it could come like that and then go back again, right? And I think you need to be very careful because this is October. And I would not be surprised that we have a violent three to 5% drop that could last one or two days, well, like we've seen like for the past 10 days, right? But a little more violent and it will be quick. And then it could resolute into the bonds getting some bottom, right? And of course, the million dollar questions for everybody, including me, right? Is okay, Mark. You are going to try to continue adding to positions on the higher lows here, plus your edge calculator, and in between the 200 moving average, everything is conflict converging at this 4,075, right? To this uh, 4,175, 4,200. We were very close last week, right? So I'm going to continue the dollar cost average in here, the stocks that I want. Or if you are really afraid, sell puts deep out of the money. But I don't do deep out of the money put for SPX or SPY. I only trade them. I trade them for income or I trade them like today for, for, for cash. And then with that cash, what I do is uh, let me show you again, people who came late, this uh, $4,000 there, 
what am I going to do with it? Uh, wire out this money, or at least half of the money, and then I'm going to buy cryptos and stocks with that. And then I'm not going to look at it. I'm not going to look at it for the next five years, six years, which I consider potentially be the turn of the next cycle, right? Remember 2027, 2029, next election, presidential election after this one, we might have so much debt, so much crap all over, and our relationship with the Chinese and Russia might not get better. Everything will be dangerous, right? But maybe we have a chance of reprieve for the next four years, or oh, that's it, this is the end. How will we know if it's the end? Here. If we break that higher low, 4,075, it's game over. Because at that point, look what happened. We are going to break all the way to a new low, which is below the COVID low, which was here, right there. That's the COVID low right there. Is that helpful, everybody?